This is Newcastle's Discovery Museum. It's full of interesting things and is a great place to visit. It has lots about science and local history. But it also has lots of other things to see and do. It has permanent exhibitions that are on all the time. And other exhibitions that change. So there's always something new to see. It's really easy to find your way around and the museum has loads of things to help you when you visit. One of the best things is, it's free to get in. So whatever you're interested in, ships or shoes, art or sport, there's something for you. We're all members of MAGDAG, a group of people with disabilities who love museums and galleries. If you've got a few minutes, we'd like to show you around. My name's Billy Richardson. I live in Elswick in Newcastle and I go to the, the Discovery Museum to look at the archives. I'm Emma Slocum um, and I come from Walls End. The thing I like about the Discovery Museum is the history of the fashion. I'm Jim Richardson. I live in Berkeley. For me, it's the boat side of it. That's my name dressed. My name is Ryan Gregson. I live in Dudley in Northumberland and I absolutely love the science maze. My name is Mel Robson, I'm 24, I'm from Stockton and I love all the exhibits at the Discovery Museum. Well, the first thing I like about it is the uh, automatic doors because I have been to museums in the past where you're, you're either fighting with doors to get in or you've got to pull the doors out over to try and get in. So the automatic doors is a bonus straight away. The reception desk's on the right and um, they're always very helpful there. If you need anything, you can always, you know, feel free to just go over and ask and they'll help. If, obviously, if you, if you don't know where it is, they'll get assistance and help help you find somewhere. The reception would help you a bit. They'd give you information on the place, like, leaflets and that because there's leaflets at the reception and that they'll give you them to tell you a bit about the Discovery Museum. The museum has two doors that you can walk through. And then there's a glass lift. And there's a big boat on the ground floor. It's got the Tabinia because that's the first thing you see when you go through the, the, the double doors. The Tabinia is a big ship. It used to be on the River Tyne many years ago. You can literally go right round it um, and have a look and, um, and see where it was built and see how big it is. They've got the, um, the ramp going leading up to the, where the shop is, uh, where you can buy stuff um, in the... Um, in the museum. You haven't got to be put off when you see the ramp. Uh, for somebody who may not be very strong with their arms, it does look a bit daunting. But if you just look, you look slightly to one side, the lift, which is a good idea, comes right down to the ground floor. So if you have got any pushing issues, you just go straight to the lift and you're, you're on your way up out of the first floor to the second floor. From a wheelchair point of view, um, it's ideal for getting around. Um, it's spacious. Um, some of the some of the settings are easy to get around. It's a lovely big building, yeah. It's great, and it's got great decor inside as well. I think you can get the the lift to all the floors. If you need help finding lifts or stairs or whatever, people will help you with that as well. Um, the canteen's easy to get around in. Um, and one of the other things is the toilets are easy to get around in as well. And there's just all sorts of different parts of the museum which you can go into and get involved in, and it's just really interesting going in there. I'd suggest go there now. <laughs> They have uh, a, quite a wide range of different accessibility options di um, regarding different disabilities, but specifically for visually impaired people, there's obviously a, quite a bit of braille signage. You know, you've got it on 
lifts and I believe the lifts are talking lifts as well. But you also get things such as audio tours where you can borrow a member of staff and uh, they'll take you around and explain like the exhibits and what's in them and stuff. Well, I've noticed over the, the times we've been there, the staff are very good. Um, you, can, you can approach them and just ask any questions you want and they seem very helpful. There's lots of screens to help with access for deaf people. There's help for people in wheelchairs and they give access for everything. I think one of the things is, I think they've got touch, touch things for people who are blind. Um, touch sensitive, I think is the call it. Yeah, you can also get like pre plan packs if you phone them up prior to your visit you can get them organized something that tells you about you know general inf like museum information like what you can find in there what they do etc and so forth and that's available in a variety of different accessible formats such as like audio and braille it's easy access for everyone it's got ramps for wheelchair users audio speakers for hard of hearing people bsl interpreters things like that They've covered everything, really. I mean, from a wheelchair point of view, I mean, it's ideal. Most of the things have been addressed, you know, like lighting, uh, signage. Um, so most of the things have been addressed for the decade for most disabilities. This one's pretty, uh, pretty good. People are pretty helpful, and they've got a variety of, like I said previously, different accessible features, which just makes it a completely uh, accessible experience. The thing I like about the Discovery Museum is the history of the fashion. I just like looking at the dresses and how old fashioned they are and that and it reminds me of the clothes my grandma used to wear and um, she used to wear old fashioned stuff that like what's in that part of the museum and that and I just find it really interesting that the clothes are beautiful as well. They're on mannequins. The dresses are on mannequins and so are the suits that the men wear and um, they're all Victorian and that, style dresses and that, old fashioned looking and that and I just find them really um, interesting and then glass cases as well. Yeah, they've got little bits of information um, next to the um, glass um, on the side um, so it tells you the history of the dresses and who wore the dresses and that. For me, um, it's the it's the boat side of it, the model boats. Uh, that's my, that's main interest. Just before I had my accident, I was able to start a, an apprenticeship at uh, Clark Chapman's, who uh, manufactured winches and cranes for boats, and uh, that's got my interest. The first thing that grabs your attention is the is the the turbinia. I mean, the the history of that is just absolutely fantastic. When you go to the displays where the boats are, it's the way they've been built. They made everything in so perfect detail. But everything's so handmade, it's, it's, it just grabs your attention. And most of the displays, you know, for wheelchairs, you, they're, a nice, they're a nice height to look at. And You've got a bit of an advantage. You can have a cup of tea or a sandwich up in the canteen and you can still have a look at them. <laughs> this is my favourite part of the Discovery Museum. This is the science maze. Come on! There's loads of things to look at. It's interesting and it's fun.
there's loads of things to have a go at, like this. The thing I find most interesting is the archives. You go in, you've got the reception desk. If you want to find a photo, they'll show you how to do it. And I've lived in Nelsic all my life, and I've made some DVDs about houses being demolished on the Northbourne Street. So I'm trying to preserve it um, on film. I went out with my camcorder um, before the demolition started, and I actually recorded it on seven tapes. And I'm glad I got to um, um, record them before they actually went. Because if they had went and I, and I didn't record them, I wouldn't have been upset. The archives got Jimmy Forsyth's photos in their collection. Jimmy was a um, photographer in Elswick. He lived in one of the um, high-rise um, flats at Quitters Park. And he actually took lots of photos over the years. Um, around Critters Park, uh, and um, all these photos survive to this day, obviously in the archives. I've actually been um, compared to Jimmy, and it makes me feel happy. Well, I think if museums is, uh, is your interest, then you've just got to give it a try. It's got something about it. It's very interesting. I say if you've got an interest in museums and like historical things and get, get along and have a look and see if there's anything that interests you. Because you know the, door, the door's open and it's, all, it's always helpful people around. It's not, you're not excluded. If a person with a learning disability hasn't been to the discovery, um, don't be scared. Just go along and see what it's like because it's a really interesting place to go to, I think. It's free, you're straight in and um, you should enjoy for what it's worth. In three words. <laughs> um, stunning. Exciting. Amazing decor. Formative. Interesting, innovative and accessible. Amazing. Fun and fantastic and really interesting kind of thing inspiring <laughs>